Okay. So we're trying something new today. We're going to be going, we're going double live. So I'm live on YouTube. I'm live on Instagram. And we're going to be taking questions from both platforms. If you don't already follow us on YouTube, it's just over here. Well, it's not over here, but it's on YouTube. Um, go sign up, go subscribe, whatever it's called. YouTube.com slash Project Pure Athlete. If you're on YouTube and you don't subscribe to us on Instagram, well, at Project Pure Athlete, get with it. Let's hammer into some questions today. It's a beautiful day here in the workshop. Windsor, Ontario, Canada. As always, I am Coach Ty of Project Pure Athlete, one of the jump guys. Uh, myself and Coach Chase love going live. Uh, those on our Instagram, <clears throat> excuse me, on our Instagram channel know all about that. We go live as much as we possibly can. And those on the YouTube, uh, the YouTube, uh, we don't go live quite as often, but we're going to be getting into it. And I think this kind of like double like whammy here with the YouTube and the Instagram is nice. So if you have, hi, hey, hard eyes from you, uh, India in the house on Instagram, where are we coming to from our YouTube family? Let me know in the comment section here. Let me know where you're tuning in from, the things that you'd like to see, the things you liked so far from us at Project Pure Athlete. I just dropped a brand new video on the YouTube channel. Um, it's a Q&A looking at things like, hey, what's the most overrated vertical jump exercise? And uh, I answer those and more uh, from our uh, Instagram family. <clears throat> so here's our um, some questions popping in here. Uh, should a person with Osgood uh, Schlatter train for jumping? Yeah, you can train for jumping. It's just obviously going to be a management of pain and also making sure that we're um, paying attention to our body. I think that's the biggest thing, but um, absolutely it's annoying. How to myself, just the way it is. Colin, what's going on? We're live here on Instagram. We're live here on YouTube. I feel like it's inception right here. We're going to go Instagram, inside YouTube, inside Instagram. Finland. Hello, Finland. Canada here saying much love. And I absolutely love knowing where everybody's from. So let me know where you're tuning in from. We had Finland, we have India, um, Asia. There we go. Where, what part of Asia? Asia's big. I like to know where. <clears throat> oh, Doha, Qatar in the house. This is amazing. Caleb, thank you so much for being here with us today on our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you check out the new video. Uh, new Mexico's in the house. I love it. I love it. I love it places places are fun uh, we just released a brand new program for those of you that are wondering what's going on here at project pure athletes Sorry, i'm just dusting my microphone for some reason i have left it and it's got a little bit of dust this is the garage so it's just one of those things but a uh, brand new uh, program just released body weight and bands uh patellar tendinopathy program 12 week progression very comprehensive program that we collaborated with uh, rehab science dr tom walters and it turned out splendidly uh, a lot of people jumping on board so if you have sore knees if you have jumper's knee or patellar tendinopathy of that knee and you're like listen i'm frustrated i hate jumping in pain i don't know what to do uh, the link in our profile is on Instagram. You can grab it there. YouTube, I'll make sure to post it. I wonder if I can just copy and paste it right up in here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I just paid, I just pasted it in the comment section. So go check that out. It's $29, and it is incredibly comprehensive. So our goal is always to bring to you um, incredibly uh, effective programs, but not break the bank. Because no one likes spending a crap ton of money and then being disappointed or is spending money at all. And we're not going to, you're not going to be disappointed even in the slightest. So that's what's up. <clears throat> Lakers or Heat? Who you got? I'm going to take the Lakers. I'm going to take that Lakers. Yash Nadi, I got the Lakers. How about you? Who do you have? I'd like to see that for Braun. Germany. There we go. I love Germany. I miss Germany. I've been to Germany a few times and I absolutely love the people. They are very, uh, very nice people. So thank you so much for being here. I am Ronald McLovin. Glad to hear you. All right. Mini Pentel. Do you guys have any vertical program for people who do have access to a gym? Of course we do. And I saw the volleyball eight week, but I have access to a gym. So I'm sure strength weight training would benefit me more. Um, so we do have our kind of jump programs that are in there already. There's an in-season, a nine-week in-season supplementary program that you can run alongside your practices and your games. Um, that's, I believe, $19. It utilizes weights and progressive training. Uh, we also have an off-season program. We are working right now on creating even more programs for y'all to um, uh, train with, uh, improve with, 
uh, share and love. Uh, but yeah, we have lots in the works. We got some more help here at PPA now, so we're trying to we're trying to hammer out as much content as we can, as much product as we can, and just give you as much as as much or as many tools as you need to improve. Because at the end of the day, that's all we want to see. Okay, um, Vladislav, Argentina. Okay, what's your longest ride? Longest ride. I don't know what ride you're mentioning to me, Vladislav. Let me know what you mean by ride. Do you mean um, um, we're like the furthest I've ever traveled? Bike. What's my longest bike ride? I don't know. I haven't bike ride. I haven't taken a bike ride since I was young. Um, I don't do a lot of biking personally. If I had to estimate my current longest bike ride, somewhere in the realm of maybe. 30 or 40 kilometers, nothing crazy. How about you? I believe that you have biked a long way. I can tell just by asking that question. Let me know how long you've biked for. Coach, yes, man. What's up? Is it, I wish I could pronounce it. No, Miguel, but the first one, Yao or Yo. Man, I wish I, I don't know what the, the squiggly, how to pronounce it. Please let me know how to pronounce it. But yes, we're doing a QA. and a So cue me and I'll A you back. I'll A you back. Uh, okay, I'm scrolling down here, Instagram, Rio de Janeiro. This is awesome. I feel like this is one of the most diverse groups we've had. Now, that being said, I am going live on two platforms at once. So I believe that I'm stacking the deck in my favor of getting the most people in here. Rio de Janeiro, thank you so much. Jump. Uh, uh, Praveen said jump. I'm not, a, I'm not a clown. I don't do what you say. Um, but yeah, we do lots of things with jumping is plyometrics should be progressed from the base. So plyometrics and, and progressing your plyometrics is important, especially as you are newer to the world of performance training. What we really want to be doing is building durability in the body, especially within those joint structures and those connective tissues um, so that you don't injure yourself. We're also progressing plyometrics alongside strength training so that your body can support a lot of those uh, positions and uh, forces. Uh, both compressive, rotational, shearing. There's so many different forces acting on the joints when you perform plyometrics. So um, yes, progressing them is very important. Um, starting with very controlled movements, holding positions, and then progressing more dynamic um, is definitely going to serve you well. Okay. Giannis, Giannis over here on YouTube. Hi, coach. In season, how should my training um, in the weight room look like? When you're in season, the biggest uh, piece of information, and I talk about this in the most recent YouTube video, we dropped the Q&A that I did from questions asked from Instagram, is talked about how important it is to view your season as trying to um, preserve your body as much as possible from point A to point B, right? Point A being the start of the season which should be really a byproduct of the off season of training, building you up, filling you full of resiliency. And as the season goes, you're doing a couple times a week, two, three times a week of supplementary work. Um, try not to, especially if you have a jumping base sport, not overloading the plyometrics and jump efforts in the gym, because you're already doing so many plyometric efforts in uh, on the court, on the field, wherever you're playing your sport, that you're really trying to supplement your efforts um, and keep muscles active, keep them stable by taxing things like your proprioception, uh, working on things like stability and general joint stability, just movement quality. You almost view your in-season like you're trying to be your own mechanic, right? You're trying to keep your body healthy so that when it comes time to hit playoffs and semifinals and finals, you're nowhere, you're not far off where you started, right? Why would we want to do all this work and get our, uh, you know, kind of preseason beginning of season threshold up really high. And then the season goes and we don't do any training and we slowly drift and drift and drift and drift. And our body ends up being at its worst when we need it to be at its best because playing your sport, it's not going to make you stronger necessarily. It makes you better at your sport, but it doesn't work the same as supplementing uh, with weight room and just uh, training work in general. So Good question. I'm coming back to IG. Coming back here, peeps. Um, over on Instagram, Vitor wants to know, what was your max vertical jump? My max vertical jump was officially, officially 47.5 inches. Uh, that was during a volleyball combine. Uh, that was an official test. Uh, my standing jump that day was 37 inches. Um, I had a very big disparage uh, between... 
uh, my standing and my full approach vertical because I'm a highly elastic athlete and that's just how my body worked. Um, I've jumped higher than that. I'm sure of it, um, especially back in my pro dunking days. Um, but my official like highest test ever was 47 and a half inches. I round up, give it to me, right? I think half an inch, 48 inches. We'll say 48 just to be fun. And, uh, there we go. Thank you for the question. All right. Vladislav, 25K, randomly saw Strava app and Reddit ride 23 before 30 minutes yesterday. It was 14K. Great. Congratulations. That's a long bike ride. Uh, bike rides can be good from an aerobic capacity standpoint. Obviously, if your goal is to jump as high as possible, we don't want to be biking like every single day. Um, but a great supplementary um, exercise and modality to help with aerobic capacity, strength, endurance, lactic acid threshold, all those great factors that really balance us as an athlete. Cause I think at the end of the day, um, jumping high is really cool and I want to jump higher and I hope you want to jump higher, but most of us play sports. And as a result, those sports require you to be a good athlete as well. Overall athlete, right? We think about it almost like a, uh, like a 2k game on PlayStation or Xbox or something like that, where you want, you don't want to stack the deck all in like the dunk, right? We don't want like 99, the dunk, and then like 60 and 50, everything else. We want to make sure we're balanced so that we're a threat. Always. We're always a threat. Always a threat. That's why we say that not everything has to look like jumping to be jumping right? Not everything has to look like a jump to train your jump. And oftentimes things that look like a jump at times are not necessarily the best decision to make depending on where you are, where you are as an athlete and who you are as an athlete. Yeah. IG gives love for that. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm diving into the next one. Uni. Okay. Here we go. Uni Jacob Jr. Uh, should you do straight leg box jumps or regular box jumps? Hey, I feel like people are reading my mind right now. I just posted this. This is the video I just posted on YouTube. Um, go look at it. Um, what I would say is if you're going to pick between the two, um, a straight leg box jump is probably more effective in the, in the, in terms of like, um, efficient jump training. I think box jumps absolutely are, uh, probably the most overrated jump exercise of all time. If I could get rid of anything from anybody's program, it would be a box jump. Now, that being said, there are time and place for variations of box jump and not only jumping on boxes, but coming off boxes in different ways and variations. It's not saying like get rid of your plyo boxes. It's saying that like you don't need to go in three times a week and jump on boxes, especially jumping on super high boxes. That doesn't do you much. It's not the box jump that that improves your jump. It's the jumping that improves your jump. You don't even need the box there. Uh, oftentimes it'll short change the kind of top end extension effort of your jump and um, you, your body will work a little bit more toward kind of recovering those heels really quick and you won't get that full plantar flexion through the ankle and as a result you short change your efforts um, master jasper wants to know did i ever do high jump uh, yes, I was a multi-event track and field athlete. I jumped 2.11 meters in high jump, so 211. And um, I loved high jump. High jump was awesome. I did most uh, most events in track and field, and I actually still do track now as a master's athlete. I throw discus. That's why I'm like I'm getting a bit bigger. Okay, I'm not as like slim, lean, ripped, and trim as I was when I was a, a thin or lean jumper. Now I'm like putting on a little bit of size, uh, trying to be able to throw this discus. I need to have a little bit more mass to move mass. I'm still staying incredibly explosive, um, but I'm not going to be a fitness model anytime soon. So um, I'm, I'm kind of liking the freedom I have with being able to, to eat a little bit more um, uh, liberally and in some ways, good food. Um, yeah, I'm a human being. I like to uh, grab a, you know, a cheeseburger and stuff every now and then, but it's nice, 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 nice. It's all, per, it's all, you know, priorities. And I'm at a point right now in my career where I'm very focused on being a, a coach and, and helping other people. And as an athlete, I'm just getting strong, powerful, and throw in a heavy discus as far as I can. Thing is, I'm a small thrower, so I need to have a little bit of weight, but be able to move it. Okay, I'm going back to YouTube here. What workout can I replace with a box jump if I don't have an object I can jump on? You just don't do box jumps. Just jump. Um, just jump up and then land. Um, you don't need a box in order to, to do a plyometric effort. If, in fact, oftentimes what happens with box jumps is it, is it patterns your, uh, or it teaches a, a poor pattern in your, um, uh, 
plant sequence, which is the last two contacts of your jump. And what happens is because you're trying to cover distance and get up is that you'll, you'll blow through that plant foot, which is the first of the second or first of the last two contacts. You'll blow through that foot and you'll end up jumping more off your block foot, which is not ideal if we're trying to jump as high as possible. So I'd recommend you just get rid of the box. All right. Gen three junior any or advice or any videos on post patellar tendon tear. Uh, I don't have anything on post complete tears, but we do have a really good video on how to heal your patellar tendinopathy um, on this channel on YouTube. So go check that out. It's called heal your knee. And it's a great video to tell you how to reintroduce um, exercise and training into the uh, equation after having tendon related problems. So it's a good video for you. We also have a great program we just dropped. If you scroll up here, you'll see the link that I put in the comments. And that takes you over to our 12 week uh, patellar tendinopathy program that has been verified, co-signed, stamped of approval by Rehab Science's own Dr. Tom Walters, one of the world um, foremost physiotherapists. And uh, we love it. It's a great program. We're super excited for people to to take advantage of it for 29 bucks. Are you kidding me? Come on now. I'm coming here. Insta to the gram. I love how you teach intent when you uh, train for jumping. Yash Nadi, I appreciate that. Intent is a word that I think is thrown around a lot. Um, uh, not a lot of people understand, I think, what that really means in the grand scheme of of jumping and, and just being an athlete or performing anything. Um um, for that. So, you know, intent for us is really just understanding that in order to express explosive power, we have to place ourselves and create an environment in our body that is explosive and, and uh, conducive to the effort you're doing. So that starts well before you hit the gym and well before you hit the court and um, really starts when you wake up that morning. And really, it's an ongoing um, environment you're creating for yourself, um, an elite, um, really an, an elite mindset helps to foster that intent. So uh, lots of things to do. Breathing is a really great one for helping to kind of wrangle and control um, our intent as well. So I appreciate that feedback. Thank you very much. That means a lot. That means a lot. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you probably all heard that heater that popped on. It's perfectly warm in here. I don't need the heater. I'm going to go turn it off so we don't have any background noise. No more noise. All right, heater off. Heater is off. Let's get this back on. All right, back to it. Back to it. YouTube always comes through in the clutch with tons of questions. So I love it over here on our YouTube. If you're on Instagram and you're like, hey, I'm sick of this platform, these lives, this vertical live, I'm over it. Go to YouTube. I'm doing this because the phone is beside my computer. I wish I could show you but then i need a phone and i'm using it so it's neat go to youtube and switch over i look this is front angle profile i think it look better from the front what do you think okay i'm having trouble with single leg bounds i'm not sure what to do with my arms and my back leg so the free leg really helps to contribute to single leg bounds. A lot of people that have trouble with single leg bounds um, need more time uh, to perfect the skill of single leg bounding, bounding and likely don't possess necess the necessary stability to be able to perform them um, effectively yet, which means that shortening the distance of your bounds and just working on getting consistent off one leg um, as you're kind of pawing and traveling forward on single leg bounds, we should be doing is really concentrating on driving through the floor. And as you drive out of that bound, we're bringing that same heel back up to the hip. If you're doing consistent single leg bounds, or if you're doing alternating bound, like foot to foot, then that free leg helps to contribute to the jump as well. So um, arms, arms are easy. Arms are striking. Arms are um, contributing to the, to the actual contact of the foot. So as you strike with the foot on the ground, you're striking with the arm. So we're thinking about um, less about swinging the arms back and forth and more about striking the arm down with the foot and staying nice and tall. The thing with bounding is that if you are, if your center of mass is off kilter, right? If you're not preserving that center of mass in relationship to your foot, you're going to bury yourself really quick on your bounce. So staying tall, shoulder over hip, hip over ankle on that contact, 
which is why it's really cool to take video of yourself and keep yourself accountable to your position and your posture will really help. From the side, you can take a look on contact. Hey, am I contacting um, foot underneath the hip on the shoulder or is it way out in front? And as a result, if it contacts, if the foot contacts way out in front of the hip, needs time to get the hip over, it's going to slow your momentum down. You're not going to have the same power off of that foot. So um, video works really well. But arm strike down, free leg contributes to the jump. Just more, more practice it takes time. Single leg bounds are no joke. I mean, that's an elite plyometric variation. So um, I get it. I get it. Ty Nelson. Hey, it's a great name. Ty Nelson. Is the tibialis anterior important for jumping? If so, what are some exercises to, th to strengthen it? I'm going to save everybody a whole lot of time. Ty, you included. Um, almost all muscles contribute to your jumping i would i would hesitate to say that i can make an argument for every muscle that being said uh, the anterior tib is an incredibly important muscle for um, dorsiflexion um, through the actual lower leg so yeah it's very very important but you will strengthen the anterior tib um, outside of the parameters of an isolation movement by doing um, a lot of compound movements and a lot of jumping jumping a byproduct of jumping but if you want to isolate and really kind of um, target the anterior tip there's lots of things you can do you can do um, wall standing toe raises you can do weighted toe raises you can do heel walks which are a great low impact variation i used to love and i still love to finish a lot of my athletes sessions on kind of a burnout of toe and heel walks where can send them on a walk or um, on their toes as high as they can for 20 meters or so and turn around and come back on your heels, right? Sorry about that. Um, walk on your heels with your toes up and that's going to burn the crap out of your um, anterior tibs. But your whole low leg, all the musculature in your low leg is very important. So, you know, aside from going on and saying, hey, is this muscle important? Is this muscle important? I get the, the curiosity. I really do. Okay. And I, I um, commend you on searching for answers for that. But just... Think about it this way. Really good jumpers are really good athletes, right? They're fairly balanced overall. And as a result, that means most, if not all muscles um, are equally important. All right. I'm coming back to the IG. What's the best jumping exercise? Hey, the Moana. Um, I was waiting for that question. That question comes every single time. I'm going to send you to our highlights um, in our profile. There's a frequently asked question part where you're going to see frequently asked questions. And this question is probably the most frequently asked question because everybody wants to know like, Hey, I just won't give me one exercise. I should be doing that. Um, and then I'll jump super high. A lot of exercises will help you and movements will help you jump higher, but there's no one best for everybody. Hear that? There's no one best for everybody means that every movement is a tool in your belt Okay. And there's a time and a place to use those tools. There are great, like bang for your buck exercises. Like if you're, if you're looking for something in terms of lifting weights, like a trap bar deadlift is great. Checks a lot of boxes, uh, moves you through, you, you can move through many different, um, uh, patterns of movement. It's controlled. It's pretty healthy for the shoulders. It loads the, puts the load over your, right over your center of mass. And, and it's, it's great. Uh, but there's a lot of great movements. So don't isolate yourself to just one. Uh, I'd recommend finding a program that you trust in and doing that, buying in and learning from it and say, hey, like what's involved in here? We do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of single leg, um, you know, contralateral movement, which means like we challenge the body across um, its midline. So we're looking at trying to create rotational forces um, that allow the body to learn how to stabilize itself in many different scenarios, right? Jumping is incredibly dynamic. We're not just moving straight forward. We're not just moving side to side. We're moving through. It's multi-planar. We're moving through rotation. We're moving into compression. We're moving through shearing. So we're trying to impart those forces on the body to make sure that it can sustain um, the energy and produce the force required to jump high. Okay. Number one tip for length. Oh, lengthening penultimate. I don't know if I read that different lengthening penultimate. Um, so lengthening the penultimate stride is going to also require that you subsequently strengthen the durability of your plant foot. The thing that you are landing into, 
right? So if you just lengthen your penultimate stride um, and that leg is really not equipped to get out of here, phone call. Sorry about that. My Instagram live just got interrupted. Hey, my apologies. Is if you don't train the durability of your plant foot and uh, you just push really far into that, what will happen is you'll decelerate a whole bunch because your body will be like, nah, -uh, not going to happen. And as a result, you'll lose your, your approach speed. So we want to find a nice pocket of long enough or, or the behavior is aggressive enough that it's kind of continuing or accentuating the, the uh, momentum through your approach and slightly lowering your center of mass so that you can take off uh, through your plant sequence. So my number one tip for um, improving the penultimate is short approach, is push punch drills, is starting right from the penultimate. So loading up the leg that you push off of, keeping nice and tall over that leg and pushing the cover distance. And you do that in sets of five, eight. Um, I'm, we're actually right in the process right now of filming for an upcoming uh, uh, vertical jump technique program. It will be the first of its kind. It will be from the originators themselves. Uh, and it will show you how to progress technique alongside your strength training um, with sets and reps and movement um, variations and the demos as well. So that will be available before Christmas. And I hope you're excited about that because this one, uh, obviously near and dear to PPA's heart because well, jump techniques kind of, it's kind of our thing. It's kind of our thing. Okay. Coming over here. Can you touch on the importance of flexibility and mobility for max for jump less in terms of injury prevention? So, uh, you know, we have some differing opinions on uh, the importance of flexibility um, for vertical jumping. And it's not that we don't think flexibility or mobility are important because they're incredibly important, but they're important within the context of um, the type of jumper you are. Meaning that if we get incredibly flexible without subsequently stabilizing the body or, mo or, mo or mobile without subsequently stabilizing the body, then what we do is we start to put ourselves into ranges of motion um, and depths that we don't have the same power output or, or rate of force development from. And as a result, we can actually um, deteriorate some of the potential at the top end. So, you know, it's, it's a balance. It's flexible enough um, that you are limiting yourself from performing or, or um, getting an injury. Uh, so I did mention injury, so sorry about that, but that's just what it is. And having enough built-in tension into the muscle, into the connective tissues that you have kinetic potential built in there. You have elastic potential built into your, into your muscles. So it's a balancing act, but it's important. Uh, more so mobility for obviously making sure that the joints are moving well and unimpeded by uh, blockages or, or restrictions of the muscle. Okay. I answered the Moana's question too. It was two questions on, on flexibility. It's like, it's like you guys knew, or you girls or you guys or you people, you humans, I'll say humans, you humans knew. Okay. Got a lot of waves, crying, laughing faces. That must mean I'm super funny. I'll just tell myself that. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. I skipped that. Miguel, I'm gonna call you Miguel because I can't pronounce your first name. And I feel really bad, but if in person, I would have you pronounce it for me. Yeah, wow, this is silent. I can't tell. Okay, Blake, I'm coming to you. Blake D, I'm a volleyball player with a clearly dominant jump form. I'm noticing my right leg is much weaker and developed some knee pain. Uh, is it bad not to be able to jump goofy or should I be training that? The reason we would have someone train their opposing plant sequence is to um, kind of encourage balance into the body. Volleyball players need that balance less than a basketball player just from a game environment or game setting um, kind of uh, – they just don't need it as much, right? Because in basketball, you're going to have a little bit more of a circumstance where you might need to jump both ways or one foot or two feet. Where volleyball, they're like set plays, pass, set, right? You might have a left side or right side or middle attack. You might have some sort of tandem that's happening. You might have a one foot jump, but it's pretty pre-programmed. And as a result, you will jump more frequently 
if not always, off of your normal or dominant plant sequence. If you're right-handed, it's most definitely going to be right-left. If you're goofy-footed, right, left, right, the likelihood is as you come into volleyball late, and probably from basketball, uh, or you coaches didn't know what they were necessarily doing and left, let you keep that plant sequence to, and really kind of jeopardize your shoulder health. In my opinion, I think, you know, from how the body moves through the air, um, I would prefer to see athletes jumping right, left with a right-handed attack. It's obviously even better for being able to see your setter. Um, but if you're getting knee pain, which much weaker and develop some knee pain, if your right leg and your right left plant sequence and your right leg is getting sore, the likelihood is, is that you need to prioritize that right hip, right foot. Um, and I would recommend quite honestly, as you jump onto the new program that we just dropped, which is that patellar tendinopathy program, but it's not just, it's not a rehab program per se. It will help rid your, the knee of pain if it's tendon related, but it will fortify the rest of your body. So it helps build everything else in there. It's a five day a week program. It's, I mean, it's got stuff in there for everybody. And I would recommend you take a look at that for 29 bucks. Worst case scenario is you get a whole bunch of other ideas of what to be doing, but I'd be focusing on getting into that right hip so that it can control the impact of the right leg so that you're not getting that right knee and femur rotating excessively and putting stressors into the tendon. And then you'll likely have to just strengthen up everything to make sure you're fortified and strong. Okay. What we got? I do not speak Spanish. I'm very sorry. I do not speak Spanish. Hello, sir. Hello to you. Anoop. I noticed that by trying to dunk strong and do a lot of windmills, I'm starting to develop a little shoulder discomfort. Any tips for avoiding that? Um, it's going to, it's going to come with the territory. I mean, you're going to, when you're whipping your arm around a whole bunch, um, it's going to get sore. You should be doing shoulder stabilization drills. We like to use a variety. Um, something really easy that would be helpful for you is if you get like a dumbbell or a kettlebell um, and you're doing basically overhead holds. So you, you're just supporting the dumbbell directly overhead, try to point the armpit forward and you're driving up into that and really punching to the ceiling. If doing something like that is like flaring up your traps or your neck, then you could always do a 90 degree hold out in front where you hold your arm here and you support. Um, you can hold the kettlebell with the bell up, we call it a bottoms up kettlebell hold and squeezing it tight. It's going to help create kind of an upstream stability, stabilizing the shoulders and a stability will hopefully help you with improving the mobility. And as a result, not quite as sore, but it's kind of part of the territory, especially if you're just whipping your arm in a circle at the rim. And, and you're, if you're getting out of position, like if you're losing the, the arm bone forward, kind of that forward glide, it's going to put a lot of stress into the anterior part of your shoulder. Um, it's just going to be a combination of a whole bunch of stuff, but shoulder stability will help you out. You know, Peter Parker Spider-Man? Okay. Who's the better dunker? Isaiah Rivera or Jay Clark? Um, they're both phenomenal dunkers. Right now, um, probably Isaiah. And I'm sure John would agree with that in terms of um, where he's currently at. Uh, Potential-wise, they're both incredibly talented athletes and jumpers. Um, depth of bag for dunks. Again, they're, they're very, very, bo they're both very dynamic and have a lot of potential there. Um, Isaiah's probably in a point in his life where he's going to be able to devote a lot more time to this, to dunking and to training for dunking than John. Um, but both are phenomenal and I love both those guys. Okay. I'm coming up here. Br uh, Braden over on Instagram. I'm starting to develop a lot of pain that seems to be patellar tendonitis where I cannot straighten my leg without pain in the knee. However, it's only in one knee. Should I start jumping off too? No, you should uh, address the pain first and foremost before you keep jumping. Um, so you're going to go to the link in our profile. You are going to click it. And at the very top of all of the links that show up, it's going to say um, patellar tendinopathy or patellar ten or knee repair program. It probably says, uh, click that buy it 29 bucks, invest in it, get training, learn from it, get rid of the pain and then start jumping. 
Okay. You're going to dig yourself a hole. If you're already in pain and you just say, oh, I'm just going to ignore it. or I'm going to jump different. You're going to develop pain elsewhere. Um, I can speak to that from firsthand experience and from being a coach now for 17 years. So I promise you, promise you, um, if you're dealing with jumper's knee, which you'll know it's that sharp pain right underneath the kneecap or on the top of the leg bone, it's best to tackle it and make sure that you have protocol in place that is meant to help repair it. Okay. It's very easy to put it in the other direction. Trust. Peter Parker. I'm a volleyball player. Um, and a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Okay, I'm over it. I want to improve my jump. I'm watching your videos regularly. How long will it take to perfect for a perfect jump? Uh, people search their whole life per, for perfect jumps. Um, it's not, you know, it's not necessarily about trying to get the perfect jump. It's the it's the journey to find it. But what we do is we just improve efficiency slowly and progressively over time. If you're looking for something that's like, hey, I want to do something for like one week and then have a perfect jump. You're not, you're not an athlete. You're not in the right sport. You're not doing, you're, you're not looking at it properly. In my opinion, uh, and if you're, if you're searching for shortcuts, right. Personally, that shows me like kind of a weaker athlete that shows me that somebody is going to kind of fall off and, and is the person that kind of wishes more than they do. They do stuff. They're like, I wish I was better. I wish I could this, I wish I could that. And I get it. Okay. Because training and, and committing to things, in the for the long term is super hard. Uh, but if it was easy, everybody would be a phenomenal athlete. Okay. So keep working progressively, uh, stay positive and understand that some days are going to be here and some days are going to be here. But if you're putting the work in and those days are still put in, then we're balancing out. We're finding that average. Okay. Where our goal really is to make our worst days better than they used to be. So we bring up the average of what our overall abilities as an athlete are. We find our weaknesses and we embrace them. Okay. Jogging is jogging good for active recovery or flexibility. Hey, going for some jogs is great. Uh, if it's not like ramping up pain or causing you any other issues going for a jog uh, every now and then not bad at all helps can help to flush stuff out um, it's good for your brain if you like to jog and think and listen to music um, absolutely absolutely you've mentioned that long distance running is not good for jumping is taking a mile and a half mile uh, walk okay Listen, when I say long distance running, I mean someone that runs three to five to six times a week and they're running like 10 miles at a time. That's not super conducive to being a high jumper or an explosive athlete. Uh, but if you enjoy running, if running is something that you um, like as part of your week of training from a uh, mental side of things, it also does help to build kind of that um, uh, low level kind of impact in, in the uh, connective tissues and the tendons that improve things like elasticity. So um, it's underrated getting just some good, um, you know, sh longer duration up tempo runs, 400, 600s, just you, you can put different types of running in your jump program and it will help you out in different ways. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are not coaches to say, okay, don't do this, do this only, don't do this, never do that. Ne we understand that everything can help you somehow. Uh, it's really just a matter of what's ideal for your situation, which is why we like to meet people, work with them, work with them a little bit more intimately so we can learn about them. Our, P our team PPA uh, remote coaching is something that we really enjoy. Uh, it's through the app that we use, which is the Train Heroic app, but we have a really nice um, active team on there. If you're interested in that, let me know. You can DM me on Instagram. You can send me an email, info at projectpeerathlete.com, and I'll send you a link. It's $39.97 a month, and we'd love to get new athletes on board, lots of programs, and you get direct contact and access to us over the messaging so uh, software built into the app. You can send your videos over that for us to review them for you. Lots of great stuff. Okay. There's lots of questions building up. I'm trying to make sure I get to most of them. Okay. And why? I, okay. So I think I answered your question on why between the dunkers. John. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain, so don't bother. I don't want to call you John Miguel, but I appreciate you trying to explain it, and I wish I could meet you in person so I could ask you. 
tips for penultimate stride on sand beach volleyball player Farouk. Um, I also played beach volleyball for many years as well. Uh, penultimate stride on sand is going to be a little bit more gallopy in nature. You're going to um, have a little bit more of an upward downward arc to it because what we're trying to do is compress the sand um, on the contact of the plant and the block foot. Um, it's also very important that you're attacking the sand downward so that we get that quick compression. So you create a platform to take off of. Um, so the penultimate stride is still, we still want to be tall, right? We still want to keep that body upright. We can lower the center of mass, but just keep the chest up so that your center of mass is managed. Attack the sand, strike the arms. Everything else kind of works in, in uh, synchronicity to that. Blake, you're welcome for the answer, man. Thank you. I can be calm now. <laughs> I'm so happy that I can help you be calm. Woosa. Anybody know Woosa? Woosa. You rub your earlobe. It's bad voice. Old school reference. Probably dated myself. No big deal. How old is everybody on here? Let me know your age. Watch me be the oldest one. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Blake's 30. Okay. We got another 30 year old. You probably get my references. Sometimes I think that I, nobody gets any of my references. Dude, can I ask one funny question? You can ask that question, but I'll be the judge of whether it's funny or not. But yes, you can ask me a funny question. Go for it. All right. We got a 30 year old. How old is everybody else? YouTube. What's up? Peoples. Tell me how old you are. Does fat percentage matter in vertical jumping? Yeah, it absolutely can. Um, you know, the, the term fat doesn't fly um, applies. That being said, it's not necessarily that everybody has to have the lowest body fat possible. It's just that you, you definitely want to optimize your uh, body composition meaning that being really heavy and big. And if you have fat on your body, the amount of force that you're going to have to apply to the ground to get that off the ground is really high. Um, so what I'd recommend is um, trying to find that optimal level, which really just means taking care of the nutritional side of things and putting good food in your body uh, to be able to jump. So for me, I jump my highest at about 10, nine or 10% body fat. Uh, Coach Chase, a little lower, probably around six, 7%. Um, and I've known people that are down as low as four or 5%. Um, I would say below 12 is where you want to be in order to be kind of jumping in your optimal state. Okay. Did you watch Tamil movies? I don't believe I have. Um, if you want to explain to me what that is, I've never really heard of it, but, um, yeah. 17. We got a 17 year old here. There we go. What's up? Yash Nadi. 19. There we go. A lot of, a lot of our, a uh, lot of young boys over here. Those teens. You're in the prime of your life. Living life. Hey, it's Donnie. What's up, man? Y'all know Elevate Yourself. This is a uh, question from Coach Donnie. What up? Hey, what up, man? What is your opinion on folding knees back on maximizing vertical? Does it achieve greater hamstring activation elasticity, or is it simply a counter movement for the thoracic hip extension? So what Donnie is asking is after the extension moments on takeoff where the knees will recoil or the knees flex and we get this kind of like, um, heel to heel recovery, heel to hip. Uh, you know, you see it a lot in volleyball. You do, will see it in like height checks. It is something that, is unadvisable to try to do meaning that if you jump and your body's not doing that naturally trying to make that happen is going to be counterintuitive to your jump there's a lot of athletes that jump uh, without the kind of heel recovery or, or knees tucked back i'm just going to give it a name eventually but um, chase and i we talk about it every now and then it's likely more so a bit of a fascial recoil through takeoff when we get rapid um, hip extension and if an athlete is, is quite hip dominant in nature that rapid hip extension does kind of trigger that stretch shortening uh, pretty aggressively which you get that little bit of a, a knee bend uh, it can be beneficial for something like volleyball with knees back helps with that thoracic extension like you're saying an extension so that you can produce your arm swing with a higher amount of velocity um, but that being said it's i my personal thoughts without going into an actual study on it is it's greatly influenced by ground contact time. So how long an athlete spends on the ground uh, typically will influence how much um, 
the the knees will bend back. And I do believe that is kind of an elastic versus strength-based jumper scenario. That being said, not all strength-based jumpers jump straight legged either. But like someone like, you know, um, Isaiah Rivera, someone like uh, Golden Child for a throwback reference, um, oh, straight leg jumpers. Chi, um, another, you know, 42 plus inch standing vertical, 48 inch full approach vertical, straight legs. Uh, so I believe that the more speed that comes into that jump, the more likelihood there is for that, that movement uh, through takeoff. But it needs to be studied more, to be perfectly honest. Like speculating on it is fun. But I think people will focus a little bit too much on it and try to achieve it. And what happens is you start to shortchange the preceding efforts through that plant sequence, which can influence the effectiveness of your jump. So it's going to be jump and jump how you uh, can express your greatest amount of output and just keep good position. So I hope that answers your question, kind of. Um, but it's a good question. Absolutely a great question. Thanks for being here, man. I'd say go subscribe to Elevate Yourself, but I feel like most people probably already are. I think I was on your channel this morning. We're trying to grow, right? We're, we're, I have not been putting the time and effort I should be putting into this YouTube platform, and that's my fault. But we're at like 12K followers now. We're growing slow, um, but we're grinding. You got like 340K followers now. Great, great job, man. It's like grind. You got some great content over there, and uh, you've always been supportive. So high five. Boom. Okay, I'm coming back. Scott Tran. Trang, Scott Trang. Yeah, glad I could help, man. Glad I could help. Oh, that was a hard one. <laughs> uh, can I comment slash like your unlisted videos? Like our program videos? Maybe, I don't know. You could try. You could try. Okay, what is your opinion on this? Is from Scott Trang over on Instagram. What is your opinion on static stretching and its effect on elasticity of muscles and force production? Uh, so, static stretching, I'm going to give you my thought. I feel like most of my answers are like little rants, but that's just how I roll. Uh, I don't like to give like black and white answers. If doing some static stretching prior to explosive exercises uh, puts you in a good headspace, uh, then do it. Okay, the amount of static stretching that you would have to do to dramatically reduce that top end effort uh, is a lot more than you'd think. So for me, I always think back to when I found out that the fastest human being to ever grace this planet, Usain Bolt, um, does 30 minutes of static stretching prior to sprinting was the moment I said, I'm not sure it really matters as much as people are making it out to be. So if a little bit of static stretching helps you focus and helps you center yourself, then why not? Personally, we like to use warm up flows um, as the kind of um, jumpstart or, or spark to our warm ups, uh, which is really just kind of getting that blood flow going, right? We, we talk about warming up being very similar to uh, jumping because jumping is progressive, slow to fast. Um, your warm up is slow to fast. Blood flow, uh, we then go into um, movement, mobility, right? And then we're going to go through activation and just kind of slow to fast progression through warm up. So if it helps you and it feels okay, a little bit's not going to kill you. Um, ideally, after a, after a training session, if you're really looking to static stretch and work your muscles at their utmost efficiency, but the effects are, are fairly negligible um, for the average person and apparently for the fastest man in the world. Okay, one more question. The only reason I have one more question is in 15 minutes, my first athlete is walking through the doors. Um, Tuesdays is an entire kind of afternoon, evening of training. So I want to make sure I'm in my right headspace. I've had an absolute blast um, talking with all of you and I will make sure this um, Q&A is always posted to YouTube so you can watch it back. And uh, same with the Instagram. If you go into our IGTV, like there's a ton of Q and A's with myself and coach chase. They're like full on podcasts because we get into a lot of really great stuff. Are you in the pro dunking in discord? Um, it's a dunk community and I think 1.2 K members. I'm not hundred percent sure in discord it's a dunk community. And I think 1.2 K members, not sure. I, I, if I don't know what it is, it's likely I'm not in it. Um, uh, but I was a pro dunker for six, six of the eight years that I was dunking around. 
Uh, how much do you think the $9 program could increase someone's vert by? Who knows? Um, zero, one, six. Uh, it's a variable uh, answer. I don't like to speculate. Uh, I like to say that if you are at a place where the, the movement of the program is ready to affect um, you and create those adaptations that you will make change, worst case scenario is inch or so a vertical and you become a better athlete and then you move on. It's $9. Um, I feel like I lose $9 out of my pocket um, every every week or so. Uh, good investment. That's why we make our programs incredibly affordable. So everybody can have a taste. Uh, we don't shortchange the quality. In fact, we uh, really amplify the quality and lower the price so that y'all get some really great um, gains from them. Hey, oh, Discord is a software. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have that. Okay, I'm out of here. Much love. Coach Ty, I feel like I'm signing out. You already know who I am. We'll talk to you all soon. Email me if you have questions. DM me if you have questions. Peace. Peace.